Welcome. Um, today we're going to do a little introduction to equations in terms of uh, algebra and the whole thing. Uh, basically, when we're talking about equations, the big deal here is there has to be an equal sign. It's a statement that shows that two, uh, two things are equal or have the same value. So that's what we're dealing with when we look at equations. Let's talk about the, how we can classify them. Uh, the fr uh, there's three basic classifications that we put equations in. There's true equations, there's false equations, and there's open equations. A true equation is something that you know to be true. So um, 2 times 4 equals 8. Well, I know that two groups of 4 is 8, and I can even do them. Here's a group of 4, and here's a group of 4. And if I count the dots inside, it'll give me 8. So that's a true statement. A false statement is one that obviously that isn't true. 4 uh, plus 6 is equal to 9. Well, no, 4 plus 5 is 9. So this is a false statement. An open statement is a statement that's made with a variable in it. So it could be true in some situations, but not always. So um, 2x plus 5 equals 15. Now, I can think about some situations where that's the case. So what if I plugged in um, 5 for x? And obviously when you have these numbers, uh, when the number touches the letter, or the number touches the variable, this is the coefficient, by the way, the 2, that's the role it's playing. It's playing a role of coefficient because it's in front of the x. Um, so when they're multiplying, I'm going to use it. So what happens if I say that x is 5? What I'm going to do is put a parenthesis there. Visually, for me, that's just what works. But you can do 2 times 5, I'm sure. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 5 more. So that does equal 15. So that's a situation where, yeah, it's a true statement. But if I try anything else, let's do 3. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 5 more would give me 11. So that's not true. So it's open to interpretation. It depends on how you define the variable, or the problem itself defines the variable. That's a key issue here. Um, so from there, we're going to start looking at uh, solutions to equations. And solutions would be uh, essentially numbers that we can plug in as values for the variable that make it true. Or we're asking in this situation, is it a solution or not? A solution would make an equation. A non-solution would make something else, a false equation. And so we're looking for truth here. Uh, is 4 a solution to the equation 4x plus 7 equals 38? So I want essentially this side to be the same as this side. I realize now I'm using the, basically the same color everywhere. That's a little weird. Um, so I'm not going to change it very much. My solution was this, which isn't much different, but whatever. Um, so I'm going to look at what I'm given on the left side and see if I can get it to equal on the right. And if it does, then yes, it's a solution. If not, no. So 4 is already there. And then I've got 4x. 4 is the coefficient because it's in front of the x. So if they're touching, that means times. Like if you have hamsters, hamsters touch, they multiply. Same with numbers and variables. If you ever had a male hamster and a female hamster and left them in a cage together, you end up with lots of other hamsters. They multiply. So same thing here. They're touching, they're multiplying. So I'm going to plug a 4 in because it's my, solu it's my question is about number 4. So And it already had a 4 here, so I do it 4 times 4 plus 7. Well, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 7 more would give me 23. That is not the same as 38. So I say no. It's not a solution to the equation. Now if I worked it out or plugged in something else for x and it gave me 38, then I'd have a solution to that equation. But in this case, I just don't. Um, then we're going to talk about writing an equation. I don't know why all this stuff's already written up here. Um, when I write an equation, usually I'm given some sort of word problem, and they ask me to write an equation to represent the situation. Now, this is the very basic early stages of it. The first thing that you want to deal with is the word is. The word is is mega important in many cases uh, because in order for there to be an equation, there has to be an equal sign. Well, is is the word that will get you there. So if you see the word is, which was great to highlight it so you could barely see it, uh, make sure you're throwing in some sort of equal sign in there somewhere or something to adjust for the fact that, yeah, I, you know, is is there. The next thing that I want to do is define my variable or pick a letter to go for it. In many cases, the problem will tell you what they want you to use, but sometimes it's a good idea to choose. Uh, sometimes you have to choose. They'll say a number. That's their big... Uh, cover for themselves so they don't have to choose it for you. They'll say a number. And a number is code for a variable. Now, if you choose x, that's fine. It's a very popular one. Uh, by the way, that whole multiplying is x thing, we're back in 
pre-algebra and whatnot, probably not even then. So back in elementary, you'll see 4x3, which means 4 times 3, and you say it's 12. You can't really do that when you get to algebra because x is such a popular variable. It's everywhere so, because it would look like this. 4x, maybe I need to do 4x times 3. So I have 4xx3. And what does that mean? It looks insane. So if you see this, something's gone terribly wrong. Unless they're asking you to combine like terms. We're not even close to that. We're close, but we're not there yet. So we're dealing with no x for variable. Usually you'll see them touching or they'll do the dots. Sometimes 4 times 3. Or you'll see 4 times 3 in parentheses. That whole thing. If it's a variable, it's touching. Um, the last thing you need to do is look for other math vocabulary. Now, there's a different video in front of this uh, about verbal expressions. It has some of the ones you need. More than is add, um, less than is subtract, product is multiply, quotient is divide, that whole thing. Look for math type words to sort of give you an idea of where to go next. Let's just kind of look at one and end the craziness. Okay, here's a pretty decent example of writing an equation, the type of early questions you'll see with it. Uh, the statement says a manager makes $2.25 more per hour than his top employee, which means they get paid similarly. This may be retail, or it may be the type of job where uh, it's a technical job where the employee does a lot of the stuff. Um, write an equation that relates the amount, and they have the letter E here. That's their variable that they want us to use. So I'm going to circle that. It's supposed to be italicized, and it is, but it's just tough to see at this text size. But be aware that it's italicized, and that's really where your variable is. Um, that the employee makes each hour when the manager makes $18.45 each hour. Well, there's no is here, so I don't have to do the equation thing. Um, but what I, I do have my variable. Now I'm going to look for math words that might come into play. More is an add scenario here, so that's good. And, you know, I've got that whole thing going on for me. So what I'm going to do now is write down information that I think is key to uh, my solution of this question. The first thing I'm going to do is write the value of what the uh, variable means, or not its value, but what its purpose is. E represents employee pay. Then I'm going to look at the uh, any numbers that I have in there that might be important that have one single value, and that 1845 thing is pretty important because that's the manager pay. That's per hour, by the way. So 1845 is my manager pay. Now from here, what I can do is uh, try to get some idea of the relationship between the manager pay and the employee pay. So I know that the manager pay is equal to the employee pay, and I'm going to use the variable here, E, plus $2.25 and 25 cents. Sets it up nice, it looks all organized. I just need to take any information that isn't in uh, the last thing that I wrote and plug in, uh, that, but is ha does happen to be in one of these two, and plug it in. So I know the manager pay is 18.45, and that would be employee pay plus $2.25 an hour. So I can figure out what the employee payment is just by doing that. It's a pretty simple way to set things up. Um, sometimes you'll have uh, other components there that show change and whatnot, but you can get a pretty good look at the fact that, um, yeah, I mean, it's, all you have to do is figure out what you subtract, or subtract 225 from 1845, find out how much the employee makes per hour, if that's something you're interested in. That's the basic idea of setting up equations. It's not always add, subtract, sometimes it's multiply. Just pay attention to the language that they're using. should be no big deal. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is mental math. Now, mental math is stuff that you probably already have in your head. Uh, you just say it automatically, like 4 times x is 16. Well, you know 4 times 4 is 16, so x is equal to 4. If it's a division question, say you have 27 over y, and that's equal to 3. Well, 27 divided by 9 is 3, so I can say that y is equal to 9. Mental math ones are usually ones that have to do with facts or just addition subtraction that you can do really easily. And by the way, I want to make a point that this does mean divide. If you have that fraction there, it tends to be more of a divide thing. You don't see this nearly as much in algebra. You, tend to, you do see it sometimes, but often you have that divide line there. It makes it easier to see that you're dividing one group by another. And when you get into um, that kind of relationship, sometimes it's easier to put the x on the bottom instead. But just is what it is. Mental math, not a big deal. It's stuff that you should probably already know. It's just the thing you say in your head anyway.
Um, the next thing would be using an, a table with an equation. Now, when we use a table with an equation, what we're asked to do, really, is to set up some information. So let's take a generic idea. So we'll use 5x plus 5 is equal to 50. Now, what I'm going to do is take the information and I'm going to uh, plug in numbers for x here and see like when the uh, 50 actually pops up in my sequence. So I'm going to start with 1. So my n value, which would be the number that I'm going to plug in, it's going to be 1. So when I plug it in, it's going to look like 5 times 1 plus 5. Now I tend to put things that are mul like when they're multiplying here, I tend to put that in parentheses because it's a variable and uh, just to remind myself it's multiply so I don't type 51 into the calculator if I'm doing it that way or just forget later and write 51. So 5 times 1 would be 5 plus 5 more would give me 10. So my n value is 1. My final value is 10 and this would be based off 5x plus 5. Now Obviously, it's going to take a little while to get there if I do each one, so I'm going to skip around. Let's try 5. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 5 more gets me 30. Doesn't quite get me there. Let's go up again, so say 8. That's the worst 8 ever drawn. I'm going to draw one next to it and just pretend that never happened. We're very close. Let's go up one more to 9. 5 times 9 is 45, plus 5 more gives me 50. So that's a good point. I'm trying to get there. So I can say uh, pretty relatively strongly about the idea that um, x is equal to what I plugged in, which would be 9. So that's one way to do it with a uh, using a table. Let's look at a table in terms of a situation that you can't get an exact answer, or it doesn't work out the way that you want it to work out. Because sometimes it just, you know, the math doesn't work out in nice, simple ways where you get, you know, integer answers like 1, 2, 3, 4. You tend to get fractions or decimals or, you know, whatever it happens to be. So let's look at negative 8x minus 3 is equal to 40 or negative 41. This shouldn't work out. Watch it work out because I just made it up. Never make stuff up out of your head if you ever become a math teacher. Um, so I'm going to start plugging some things in to see if I can get some values for x there. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, actually let's do positive 41. That would be like way more fun because it makes it more complicated. So I'm going to start out with 1 as my n value. So n negative 8x minus 3 and value. So my first one I'm going to do 1 here. So that means I'm going to do negative 8 times positive 1 minus 3. Well, negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. Minus 3 more gets me to negative 11. See, I'm kind of not moving in a good place here. If I go to 2, negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. And if I take 3 more away from that, it gives me negative 19. So I'm moving more negative if I add positive numbers. So what I'm going to do instead is try negative numbers. And I'm going to go way up, or not way up, but a little bit up, and do negative 4. So negative 4 will go after the 8. So negative 8 times negative 4 minus 3. Uh, what I'm looking at here is negative 8 times negative 4, which is, of course, positive 32. Because remember, negative times negative is a positive. And then I subtract 3 from that. So I start at 32, subtract 3, gets me down to 29. Uh, so that's kind of, that's much closer to positive 41 than negative 19. So let's try negative 5. Negative 8 times negative 5 minus 3. Negative 8 times negative 5 is positive 40. And you take 3 away from positive 40, you get 39. No, you don't. What am I? Uh, 37. I even said it in my head, and then I wrote 9 down, and I just thought I'd go with it. Don't follow that pathway. 37. So you go up to 40, you take 3 away, and you end up at 37. That's very close to 41. So we're going to do one more down. So negative 6. Once again, since the negative 8 and negative 6 are touching, I'm going to say negative 8 times negative 6, which is positive 48. And I'm going to take 3 away from that, and it gives me 40. 
5. So the reality is uh, that's where 41 would fall in. It falls somewhere right in this general area. So I can say that x is between negative 5 and negative 6. And if they're asking me to estimate, that's the best way to go about doing it. If they want the exact answer, you're going to have to solve. But this doesn't have anything to do with solution. It just has to do with estimation and using a table. So there's that. Um, and that's it. So uh, set up all your, uh, if you need to set up an equation, do that. If you need to talk about, comp this, write an equation, make sure you look for the is if it's there, look for a variable, look for math language like we had in verbal expressions. You should be fine. No big deal. Good luck.